Hello everyone, welcome to my first YouTube video and today I'm gonna share some tips on how to build starter bows because as you can see I've made quite a bit of them. They're really fun to build and are incredibly useful in career too, so it really helps to know how to build them well. Tip 1. Spend some time on the hull. The hull is the shell of your boat, usually built using blocks, wedges and pyramids. Make sure to spend some time in it because it's going to decide how your boat is going to look and building a pretty boat is way more interesting than an ugly one. There's a lot of ways to make hulls and this topic needs a video of its own, but the most simple technique is to make cross sections out of wedges and then put pyramids based on them. An easy way to improve your hull's performance is to use wedges instead of blocks. They weigh half as much and allow your boat to be much lighter and fly on top of the water while using less fuel. If you are struggling to make something that you are happy to build on top of, scrolling through the workshop page on Steam and Vehicle Showcase channel on the official Discord can give you a ton of ideas. In my example, the boat I chose is uh, a speedboat looking hull with a deep V profile that makes it easier to control the winds. Make sure the boat is not too small. Career starts with $25,000 and for your star boat you should use at least half of that. If your boat is too small, it's going to handle poorly in storms, be unable to carry a lot of people, and generally will be less effective at completing early game missions. My suggestion is to use at least 70% of the small dock, and not cheap out on speed, handling, or cargo capacity, which is exactly what I did with my starter boat. As you can see, it's pretty big, and it can carry 6 people, which is more than enough for a starter boat. Tip 3. Get the right engine. Constructing the proper engine for your boat is the key to success. Having one that is too small will make it slow or force you to run it at a higher RPS, which causes fuel efficiency and overheating problems, while an oversized engine causes problems with cargo capacity and stability. Your boat will take off and flip if it goes too fast. I go by a simple rule of 1 cylinder per 100 kg of displacement. For example, a 2 ton boat needs 20 cylinders, and in my case, my 800 kg boat needs only 8 cylinders. As you will see later, this engine is about right for the boat as it remains light and cheap while providing enough power. Tip 4. Make sure to optimize fuel efficiency. When you have your boat running, it may look like it's finished, but in most cases it's far from perfect. One of the things you still have to do is measure your fuel efficiency and try to optimize it with gear ratios. This might seem rather boring and it kinda is, but it is important if you want to make a good boat. Remember, the fuel consumption of an engine increases with RPS and they produce the most power per liter at 8. However, in Star Boat it's recommended to have your engine spin a bit faster so your boat goes at least 15 meters per second on cruise gear and 25 meters per second on fast gear. Gearing the propeller faster makes the boat slower, while gearing it slower makes the boat faster, but the engine has to reach higher RPS and use more fuel. A perfect boat will have a balance of efficiency and power. I somehow hit that bullseye first try when I geared my boat 2 to 3 at fast gear and 1 to 2 on cruising gear. Tip 5. Get the right first person tools. These things are one of the most important aspects of starter boats and are severely underrated by beginner players. They allow you to see in the dark, repair your boat, light the area, heal yourself, and even bring people back from the dead. The base required of is a fire extinguisher, a welding torch, a rope, a hose, night vision, and regular binoculars, a flashlight, and a defibrillator. Tip 6. Make it accessible. Your boat can and will break as you are using it. No matter how good you are driving, you will sometimes crash. To prevent becoming stranded on an island and be forced to load a save, you should put hatches on your boat to provide welding torch access to key components in the nose, where you will want to fix your boat from time to time. Tip 7. Active Stabilization Sometimes your boat will tilt and roll when you turn, and that is the perfect time to stabilize it actively. Boat designs, especially deep V designs like mine, tend to be really easy to tilt in the Z axis, so it's recommended to hook some small fins to the back to a simple PID and get it to swim straight up. I realized that my boat liked to tilt, so I did exactly this thing, as it, and as you can see, it improved the handling and the stability greatly. Tip 8. 
Make sure to optimize for first person. In Korea, you're restricted to the realistic first person view camera. That greatly reduces visibility compared to creative. So try to drive around in first person and see what is reducing visibility and try to fix that part of the design. Ideally, you should be able to see the horizon on all sides. And my boat currently gets pretty close to that. If for some reason you can't put windows on your vehicles, and this applies to helicopters more than boats, monitors with cameras can be of great help. Tip 9. Equip for firefighting. A star boat may be forced to put out fires. In case a fire gets too big, simply stuffing it full of extinguishers will, will be of little help. The best way to deal with things like wildfires and burning ships is to put a large pump somewhere inside the hull and make that pump seawater into a fluid hose. This act is an eternal fire extinguisher. As long as you have fuel, it will work, and you can spam the water to extinguish the biggest accidents. Tip 10. You need to get your boat on a test mission. You may think your boat is for sure now done. In 90% of the cases, it's missing some crucial component that you have forgotten about. Before using it in career, a good practice is to get it out on a mission in creative and see how it performs, where it struggles, and what you forgot. Maybe you didn't place a fire extinguisher, maybe you forgot your cooling. Testing your boat will help you uncover all the issues it's currently experiencing and sort them all out in a risk-free setting before going out into the real world, aka career. Right, and that wraps up the video. I hope these STEM tips will help you in making your own starter boats. I don't know, but they sure will help me when I just started at the game. Simply following them can take your boat building skills to the next level.